Hi friends, today we are going to talk about making these cotton dishcloths. We love them at our house. We've given them as gifts. We still give them as gifts. We always have a basket of them at any given time um, of some completed and some that I'm working on. And when I go to the craft stores, I just grab some cotton yarn and throw it in that basket. So I always have the supplies needed to work on them. So today we're going to talk about what yarn you need the hooks you need, and we're going to go ahead and jump into the pattern. All right, so there are several different types of cotton yarn, and the kind that we want for these dishcloths is this sugar and cream, and there's also several other names, um, but it's essentially a worsted weight, which is kind of like a, you can see the medium size of it, um, cotton yarn. And cotton is great because these can be washed with your regular towels. You can just throw them into the washer and dryer on the hot cycle and um, they work up great. They clean up great. Um, so yeah, right here it says worsted four ply. And another thing I wanted to show you on here, and pretty much any ball of yarn that you buy new that has a little wrapper or a sleeve on it, it will tell you what size crochet hook to use that is best for this size of yarn. And on here it says a five millimeter US 8, eight or an H crochet hook. Um, so that is handy to know. So if you ever find a yarn that you like and you're not sure what to stitch it up with, um, every wrapper will tell you the recommended crochet, recommended size crochet hook or knitting needles right there. And I was going to show you, there's several different need, uh, crochet hooks that you can buy. This is just a standard crochet hook. I think it's Susan Bates, maybe, I'm not sure. But it's an H8, five millimeters. This is one that just has kind of a cushy handle. It's nice, it's also a five millimeter. It doesn't say H or eight, but it's five millimeter. Here's one that has a little wooden handle on it. Um, all of them work great. Usually some people prefer one over the other. Like sometimes, like all of these pretty much look the similar or you know same, these two for sure. But sometimes I just get into, um, sometimes I just get comfortable with one over another one. Um, so you might just have to experiment and find one that you like. Um, it's interesting, but most of the time it's just the basic one that I prefer the most. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and break into this. Um, most of the time I go ahead and go ahead and slide the sleeve off. And there's usually two ends. One is usually wrapped around the side. You can see that one was right there. Sometimes there's one that you can see that is coming out of the center. Um, oftentimes that creates a lot of knots for me on this cotton. So I usually just pull the one that seems most obvious, which is usually the one coming off the side. Um, the first thing we need to do is create a slip knot. I just wrap it around my finger and pull a little loop up in the middle there. And then you should be able to pull the tail and either tighten it or loosen it. Put your crochet hook in, tighten it down, and we're going to start doing our chains, chain stitch. For this um, pattern, I almost said recipe, but for this pattern, we are going to do 29 chain stitches. So we're going to hold on to our crochet hook. We're just going to loop the thread around and then pull it through the loop. You might need to keep repositioning these two fingers to hold it, and that's perfectly fine. If you hold it a different way than I do, that's perfectly fine too. But we need 29 chain stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, Five. Sometimes this thread or this yarn in particular will try to um, tear apart a little bit. That's not really the right word, but it's got a four ply. So I have to be careful so that I don't kind of shred it with my hook. But um, even if that happens, that's perfectly fine too. Anyway, there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I should also make one other comment. I have a tendency to crochet very tightly, so I try to, I have to make a conscious effort to try to be a little looser in my, in my stitches. It's 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, need a little more, oops, 28, 29, 29 chain stitches. Okay, so if you lay the 29 chain stitches down, um, you can count them if you'd like to confirm. I always seem to double count just to make sure. The very first loop that is going around the crochet hook, do not count that. That is kind of like your working loop. But right below that, you can start counting and you can kind of see the V, it almost looks like a little heart. That is one chain stitch. So let's count those real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. It gets a little tricky sometimes, but I just always count to make sure. So that's 29 chain stitches. And then our very first row, we are going to do single crochets across all of those stitches. I say all of those stitches, but what we are going to do on the first row when we start, we are going to skip the first stitch and we are going to crochet into the second chain stitch. That's pretty common on um, crochet patterns. We are going to be doing a single crochet. If we were doing a double crochet, um, pattern designers will often have you chain two or three stitches in the beginning, or not chain, but skip two or three in the beginning. This one is a single crochet, so we are going to skip the first stitch. We are going to go into the second stitch, and I'll show you what that looks like. Let me get some yarn loose back here. So this is our working loop. See, it still increases, decreases. We're going to skip the first stitch, and we're going to go into the second stitch. We're going to go in, we're going to wrap the yarn around the loop, pull it through, two loops on now. We're going to wrap the thread around again, pull it through both loops at the same time. That's one single crochet right there. We're going to do another. Here's the next loop or chain stitch, put it through, wrap around, pull through, put it in the next chain stitch, wrap around, pull through, two loops, wrap around again, pull through. And we're going to keep doing that all the way across. If you need to stop the video and watch it again, that's perfectly fine. Just do that in every chain stitch. And then when we get to the end, we are going to count and make sure that we have all of the stitches that we need to have. We should have 28 stitches, but let's work across the row first. Okay, I single crocheted in every chain stitch, except for the very first one that we skipped because we started in the second chain stitch from the hook. So I single crocheted all the way across and I just set it down. So I'm gonna show you how to count the single crochets because you want to have 28 here. So we'll start at this end. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Yes, excellent. Um I've had to start over many times because I've skipped a stitch or done something here or there. So it's at the beginning, it's not that big of a deal, but it's good to go ahead and get your foundation row set up properly. And then that makes for a much smoother project. All right, so we've counted the stitches. We have 28 single crochets on here. So at this point, we need to turn our work so that we are going back the opposite direction because that's how we're gonna work back and forth so that we create our 
square dishcloth. So to do that, we are going to pick up our work. We're going to do one chain stitch. We're gonna loop the thread around, pull it through. That's one, one chain, and then we need to turn. And when you turn your work, I like to turn clockwise like this, as opposed to this way. If I turn clockwise, I feel like it better enables me to see the upcoming stitches right through here. And one tip, and this is something I struggled with for a long time, is finding my first stitch after I turn. But if you see, if I pull on my hook, it makes my loop bigger and smaller. That is not your working stitch. So we don't wanna go in there. We want to go to the next stitch next to it, which is this stitch. Um, that is the first stitch. So, if you look at the kind of the structure of this stitch, it kind of looks like the chain stitch that we were counting before. But you can see there's a front loop and there's a back loop. Front, back, front, back. Um, this single crochet stitch that we are doing, it is a variation um, of a normal single crochet. And we will do a normal single crochet at the end of this dishcloth. But right now for the body of the dishcloth, we are going to work in the front loops and the back loops only. And I say that, here's an example. You can see that it doing it this way just gives the, the body of the dishcloth a lot of texture, which helps with washing dishes. So this is my favorite pattern for dishcloths. And the way that we're going to make this happen, again, that is my working thread in that loop. So we're going to ignore that and we're going to come to the very next stitch in the very first stitch, we are going to go in, we're gonna put the hook into the center of the stitch and then out and just pick up that one loop. Hopefully you can see that, that back loop. We're gonna wrap the yarn around, pull it through, two loops, wrap around, pull through again. So that's our first single crochet through the back loop. For the next stitch, we're going to single crochet through the front loop only. So we're gonna come from underneath, come into the middle, wrap the thread or, or the yarn around, two loops, wrap around, pull off both loops. So we did a back and a front. We'll do a couple more. This is the back, we go into the center, down, picking up just that one loop. Wrap around, two loops, wrap again, pull off. Next one, we're gonna do a front. Come in from the, the bottom front, wrap around, pull through, two loops, pull off. I wanna show you that oftentimes I get distracted and I set my work down and then I come back and I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't remember where I was. How do I know if I need to do a front or a back? Well, actually, if you just look at the stitch structure, you will be able to figure out where you were. So like here, I see that the front loop is gone because it's caught up in this stitch. So I know to go ahead and do the back stitch next. So loop it around, pull it through two loops, wrap around, pull through both. Likewise, on this one, you can see I did the back loop because here's the front loop right there. So that always helps me to know if I just take a quick glance at where those loops are, then I can see the last stitch that I did, whether it was the front or the back loop. So we are going to continue alternating back loop, front loop, back loop, front loop, all the way to the very end. And we have 28 stitches. And since we started with a back loop, we should end on a front loop. The very last stitch of this row that we do should be a single crochet through the front loop. So I'm going to do that. And I'll be back here in just a few minutes. Um, you can go ahead and work on it as well, and I'll be back here in just a few minutes. Okay, so I continued stitching across the row, and I wanted to show you, here are the last two stitches, and sometimes they can get a little tricky, especially the last stitch. So I wanted to show you how I approach it, and then how to turn and, and start the next row. So as I was saying before, here you can see this was the front loop, so my last stitch was in the front loop, so this one will be in the back. So we're going to go pick that up. Take it through both loops and now as you can see 
we've got we've got one stitch left right here so if we look at it from the top down we need to go in the front loop and sometimes this can be a little tricky for me anyway so just pull it through two loops pull it through again and take both the loops off so then we're at the end of the row and again we need to turn and then head the other direction again so we're going to do one chain stitch and then we're gonna turn clockwise again, like I mentioned before. And then it's okay to just take a minute and gather your thoughts, make sure you know where you're going. So you know, we don't have to get in a huge hurry. It should be relaxing once we learn the basic principles of it, so. So now we're on the next row, our third row after our chain stitch. So again, here's the working thread. We can, I can create the loop with my hook and make it bigger and smaller. Right next to it is the first stitch. And again, just like last row and just like the next, I'm not even sure how many rows, I don't think I've ever counted the rows. I think it's probably about 18 rows or so, or so but I will show you further in how to measure or determine you know, when you have your square. But we're, gonna, we're not going to go into this stitch because if we do, we'll just lose our slip knot. But we're gonna go into the back of the first stitch Pick up the loop, we have two loops on, wrap the thread around, pull it through both. The next one, we're going to do the front loop. Wrap around, pull through, wrap around again, pull through both. And again, like I said, this sometimes gets a little stiff. Cotton yarn does not have any give to it. It's not stretchy really. Um, so there's just, in the actual thread itself or the yarn, there's just not a whole lot of give in it. So sometimes it gets a little stiff. And that's okay, you get kind of used to it. But this is the, the front loop. Now we're back to the back loop again. And then the front loop. And you'll get used to it. After you start looking at the loops, it'll, it'll get much more familiar for you. So just continue across. Continue all the way across. You're, you're still gonna continue to have 28 stitches the entire duration of the dishcloth. Um, when you get to the end, the last stitch, again, you should be um, single crocheting in the front loop of the last stitch and then do one chain stitch and then turn it and start again in the first stitch and just keep doing that like I said um, probably I've never counted the rows before but I think it's probably about 18 rows or so and I'm going to keep working on this and then I will come back when my dishcloth has grown a little bit you can compare it to this this one right here one's actually a little bit smaller. I probably used a smaller hook. And that's the other thing. You can change the, the size of different things that you're stitching based on the hook that you're using. I also have a tendency to crochet a little very tight, I think I mentioned before. But anyway, so we're going to keep working just back and forth, back and forth until this grows. And I'll go ahead and tell you right now, one way that I or the main way that I measure is because I don't really count rows. I don't really measure with a ruler. I assume this still has my crochet hook in it. What I do is I start folding my corner up and seeing when it starts, when it matches. And when it starts matching, then I know it's square. And when I get to that point, I do my last row, which I will show you when I come back. So in the meantime, keep working on your dishcloth. I will keep working on mine and I will see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, I just finished doing the single crochet in the back loop and the front loop alternating all the way across. I did it on all of these rows and I'm noticing that it's starting to look like a square. So the main way that I check to see if I'm at the point where I wanna be, where square, I mean, you can obviously make this whatever shape or whatever width or length that you want, but I like a square, is I like to take a corner and fold it over into a triangle and see how we're doing. So there's only a tiny bit left right here. And when I put the last row on, I have one more row that I need to do when I get to this point. And that tells me that I'm ready to go ahead and do the last row. So to do that, I'm gonna pick my work back up. And like I said, I just finished this row. So I need to do my one chain stitch and then I need to turn it around. Again, I always go clockwise. 
And this time, instead of doing single crochets in the back loops and the front loops, I'm just going to do a straight single crochet in each stitch all the way across. And that is, and this is the standard single crochet. You actually go in and pick up both loops, both loops, and I'll show you what that looks like. Again, here's my working loop, so I'm not going to go in that stitch. This is the first stitch. If I were repeating the previous rows, I would go into the back stitch. But instead, I am going to go in underneath and pick up both. Can you see the stitch on there? There's the front loop and the back loop. I'm gonna pick up both. Wrap it around, pull it through, wrap it around again, pull through both stitches. There's one. I'm gonna do the same in every stitch all the way across. And you get to where you can just kind of feel it if it's right. And the, there's not a whole lot of resistance when you put the hook in. So you put it all the way through both. See, there's the front and the back stitches or loops, wrap it around, pull it through, wrap and pull through both loops. And we're going to, whoops, that happens too. We're going to pull it all the way through, or we're going to do this all the way across the last and final row. There's another one, and another one. Just keep looping in, around, loop around, pull through both, pull through both, capture the yarn. I taught my kids a saying for knitting and crocheting when they were young children, and I don't remember the little poems now, but there are poems out there to help you learn how to knit and crochet. There's another stitch. I only have a handful left. Let's see. The fun thing about these washcloths, or not washcloths, but dishcloths, although you can make them as washcloths, I have some that I made with a softer yarn that I keep in the bathroom and wash my face with, but these are dishcloths. Um, fun thing about these is they actually work up pretty quickly. I can probably make one of these in about 35 minutes from start to finish. They're really great if you wanna to listen to a audiobook or a podcast or something like that. Let's see, we only have two left. There's one stitch there. Again, the last edge stitches are always, oops, the hardest for me. There we go, capture that, wrap around, pull through. That is the end of that. I usually just pull the ball of yarn through and then you can of course come in cut that with scissors and I will show you the very last step in just a second but there is your dishcloth that's so exciting okay I'll be right back and show you what to do with these ends all right the only thing we need to do to finish up is we need to clip the yarn tails and then we need to take a a darning needle and I call it sinking the ends um, not really sure what it's called but weave in the tails so put it put your needle put your yarn onto the needle and then I just kind of look for a pathway to just kind of weave the ends in not necessarily a right or wrong way to do it and once these are washed the first time they will shrink a little bit somewhere between 10 and 20 percent they will shrink and the fibers will just kind of fill in so it'll become a firmer cloth so I just kind of leave the end in like that come in trim it turn it around thread this needle, oftentimes I will crochet a whole bunch of these, like 10 or so, and then one afternoon I will sit down and again, I call it sink the threads, but weave in all the threads. And again, I'll just kind of come in here, go about an inch or so, pull it through, remove the needle, and then clip off the tails. And there you 
you go. A beautiful dishcloth that is not only beautiful, but functional as well. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you were able to make yourself some dishcloths and maybe bless some others with some as well. Be blessed.